name is Maxwell Green. I am the uh, webinar training manager here at Needy Meds. Uh, what is Needy Meds? Needy Meds is a national nonprofit organization. The face of our organization is our website, which is an informational resource. And through our website and toll free helpline, we connect patients to programs that provide financial assistance for healthcare expenses, including, but not limited to, medications. We do have a special guest today who I will introduce shortly, but first I would like to go over a few housekeeping rules. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them at any time by typing them into the questions bar of your control panel. Either me or the guests will answer them at the end. This webinar will be recorded and it can be found on the webinar library page under the Getting Started tab of the Needy Meds website. You may also find similar webinars under that same page. And with that, I'd like to begin. So today's topic is Best Drugs for Less, How to Save on the Medicine You Need by Consumer Reports. You've probably seen ads for drugs that promise new solutions to your health problems, but are those drugs really the best choice for your condition? That's where Consumer Reports' Best Buy Drugs project comes in. Through their brand new free guide, Best Drugs for Less, the project will share tips on finding inexpensive, effective, and safe treatments for allergies, insomnia, chronic pain, and other common conditions, plus saving the most at the pharmacy counter. And with that, I'd like to introduce our special guest. It is Ginger Skinner from Consumer Reports. Ginger Skinner is an associate editor for Consumer Reports' Best Buy Drugs. Ginger has worked for Best Buy Drugs since the project's early days and currently writes primarily about drug quality, cost, and safety issues. She also manages the project's social media efforts. Okay, Ginger, thank you for coming. I'm changing the screen and passing the mic to you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for that introduction, Maxwell. I'm Ginger Skinner, and as Maxwell said, I'm a writer for Consumer Reports Best Buy Drugs. And while most of you have probably heard of Consumer Reports, you maybe not have you've maybe not heard of Best Buy Drugs. Simply put, Best Buy Drugs is a public education project aimed at offering you unbiased, evidence-based drug information and giving advice to consumers on which drugs are best for your condition based on three things, effectiveness, safety, and cost. And overall, we also aim to empower people to have regular conversations with their doctors about medications, safety, and cost. So let's begin. We've all seen the headlines recently about rising drug prices for, say, hepatitis C drugs and your cancer drugs, but many people don't know that prices for other drugs are rising as well, and prices for drugs that were traditionally your less expensive options, such as generics. Um, in a nationwide poll, we recently asked more than a thousand adults who take prescription drugs about their drug costs and the actions that they're taking to afford them. And in that poll, in doing that, we found that 105 million adult Americans regularly take a prescription drug. 36% of those are women, a little over half are men, and 96% have health insurance. And on average, Americans are spending almost $600 a year out of pocket and taking nearly five medications each. Now, when we asked about price increases, one third of the people we polled said they'd experienced an increase in their medication prices in the past year. And while the average said they paid $39 extra out of pocket last year, one in 10 said they were paying an extra $100 or more over what they previously paid. And we're seeing that those high drug prices, they're taking a really troubling toll on people and not leaving folks with a lot of options. For example, some people admitted to applying for government assistance, spending less on their groceries, postponing retirement so that they could hold on to their health insurance, and some even said they took a second job just to stay on top of medication costs. It's pretty shocking. And that's not all. Nearly 40% of people in this situation 
cut at least one corner with their medication in order to save money. And that included taking risks like skipping refills and dosages, taking expired medications, cutting pills in half without a doctor's okay, and some even said they were sharing medication with other, with other people. And people who experienced these surprise drug price increases, they also said they experienced some other financial setbacks, such as missing a bill payment, losing health coverage, missing a mortgage payment, all of this adding up to a really dismal situation for people simply trying to afford the medicines they need. So how do you make sure you're getting the best prices on your medications and you're not paying too much? How can you lower your Rx? How can you lower your prescription costs? This was one of the questions we had in mind when we set about to put together our new issue of a guide called Best Drugs for Less. Um, it's a small magazine where we wanted to condense the information about the best, safest drugs for what ails you and get it out to the public, while also, of course, keeping costs as low as possible. That said, I put together 10 shortened tips that can help lower your costs on the medicines you need. Let's begin. Number one, when your doctor writes you a new prescription, make sure it's a generic, and if it's not, ask for one. Many people, including some doctors, assume that newer brand name drugs are better because they're newer, but that's not necessarily true. In fact, more than 80% of all medications in the United States are available as a generic, and studies have consistently shown that older medications are as good or even better than newer ones. And they provide, provide some major savings because they can cost up to 95% less than their brand name version. For example, you may only have to pay four to ten dollars for a generic versus fifteen to thirty five dollars for a brand name. Still in our recent poll, four out of ten people said that their doctor sometimes or never recommends generics over brand name drugs. So get into the habit of asking, is there a generic version of this drug? If a generic isn't available, Ask your doctor or your pharmacist for a lower cost drug in the same class of medications that would work just as well. Number two, make sure your drug is covered. This is really important. If a drug is on your formulary, that means it's covered by your insurance company. However, many people don't know that your formulary can change several times a year without notice. So a drug that's been covered previously, it may fall off the list. And this can happen because relationships between insurance companies and drug companies change, and that can impact the availability or price of certain drugs. So be sure to keep track of your formulary and work with your doctor to get drugs that are on your formulary. If it turns out that your drug is not covered, you should ask your doctor to prescribe a different drug that is on your formulary that works just as well. If that doesn't work, ask your doctor to petition your insurance company to cover the drug. And if that doesn't work and your insurer denies that request, you can still file an appeal. So you have options. Number three. Put away your insurance card. Hundreds of generic medicines can be purchased for as little as $4 for one month and $10 for three months supply at major chain drug stores, big box stores, and, and club stores through drug discount programs. That's if you don't pay with your insurance. And they can be cheaper than a copay even. For example, the average price for generic Selexa is $29, the average retail price. But through Target's discount generic prop program, you can get a month's supply for just $4. So if you normally pay a $10 copay, you're saving around $6 a month, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that can add up over time. So the next time you're picking up a prescription, if you're 
pharmacist doesn't offer, be sure to ask your pharmacist, will this drug be cheaper if I don't use my insurance? Number four, instead of getting your 30-day supply, ask your doctor to write you a 90-day prescription. Most pharmacies offer discounts on a three-month supply. For example, $10 for three months versus $4 for one month. And buying in bulk can save you two copays and all those extra trips to the pharmacy. Number five, shop around for the lowest price. Our secret shoppers have found that drug prices can vary widely from one pharmacy to the next. So before you settle on getting your medications from one pharmacy, Call or stop by two or more to price your medication. Again, you want to be sure that you ask the pharmacist for the lowest, lowest price. It's important that once you do find a pharmacy that you like and that fills your prescriptions for a low price, that you try and get all your prescriptions filled at that one pharmacy. It's really important for safety, and that way your pharmacist has your full prescription record and can flag any potentially dangerous drug interaction. All right, we're halfway through. Number six, try a mom and pop or an independent pharmacy. They, they're also called community pharmacies. Again, Best Buy Drugs secret shoppers have found that you sometimes can negotiate with independent pharmacies on drug prices because they may have more discretion over pricing than, than do the chain pharmacies. So they may be able to either match or even beat chain prices. Number seven, split, split, split your pills in half, but only do so with a, a doctor or pharmacist okay. If you get the okay, buy a pill splitter from your local drugstore, which can cost, you know, around, around three or four dollars. But never use a knife, because if you use a knife, you could split your pills unevenly or even break them into pieces. You also want to know and this is one of the reasons you should ask your doctor first, is that not all pills are meant to be split. For example, blood thinners, anti-seizure medications, certain capsules and pills with a hard outer coating, and combination medicines, um, those cannot be split. And there's a whole list of other drugs that you should never split, and that list is in our Best Drugs for Less guide, which is also online, by the way. And I'll get to that later. <clears throat> Tip number eight, you want to be wary of drug samples. I know that samples from your doctor may seem like a really good way to save, but usually those samples are samples of a newer brand name drug. Usually those drugs are pretty pricey. So once the samples run out, you could be stuck footing the bill for the drug at its full price. And those sample drugs may not even be the best treatment for your condition. So if your doctor offers you a drug sample, ask instead if there's a low cost generic alternative because you will be paying, if that's, this is a drug you're taking long term, you wanna make sure that you can afford it over the long term. Okay, number nine, take fewer drugs. By this I mean you wanna, you know, there are drugs that you may think that you need to take indefinitely, but that may not be the case. So be sure that you regularly review all your medications with your doctor and ask if there are drugs that you no longer need. A lot of conditions can improve without drugs. For example, acupuncture, exercise, Massage are usually better first treatment choices for back pain than muscle relaxants and certain painkillers. So make it a habit to discuss with your doctor some non-drug treatments that are safe and work just as well as medications, and that'll help you cut back on costs and the number of possible interactions. Finally, number 10 is Use needy meds to find a patient 
Assistance Program, also known as a PAP. Uh, PAPs are designed to provide free or discounted medicines for people who can't afford them. To find a, a PAP, you can visit the Patient Savings tab on Needy Meds and click on Prescription Assistance. It's up in the sort of left, almost left corner. And there you'll find everything you need to know in order to sign up for a P PAP. You can also find a PAP simply by entering the drug name in the drug search field. Here I have typed in Matt Foreman, and after I do that, I get information on PAPs that may help me afford my medication. So let's just recap in case anyone joined late. Here are the 10 tips one more time. Number one, insist on generics. Number two, make sure your drug is covered. Make sure it's on your formulary. Number three, put your insurance card away and try paying with cash. It could save you money. Number four, ask for a 90-day supply of your medicine instead of the, the standard 30-day. Number five, shop around. Try more than one pharmacy because prices vary. Number six, try a mom and pop or an independent pharmacy. Number seven, split your pills in half, but only do so if your doctor says it's okay. Number eight, be wary of samples. They can add, the cost can add up over time. Number nine, take fewer drugs. And number 10, try using needy meds and see if you qualify for a patient assistance program that can cover the cost of your medicine. Okay, so I'm going to, in a second, I'm going to pass the mic back to Maxwell, but I wanted to invite you to visit www.crbestdrugsforless.org because there's a lot more information there that can help you save on your medicine. Um, I did a condensed version, but if you visit www.crbestdrugsforless.org, you can read through tips for various conditions, such as insomnia and pain and diabetes. So feel free at your leisure or whenever to visit that website. And with that, I'll pass the mic to Maxwell. Hi, everyone. That was a great presentation, Ginger. Um, Thank you. So I think it's great how you uh, show tips on how to empower the consumer, especially uh, in regard to risk taking and lowering costs. And w as a consumer, what you can do is kind of find out about that drug or uh, drug classification uh, from Consumer Reports, uh, their program. And then once you get the information you need and you've found the drug that you think is right for you, you can use the Needy Meds webpage, as uh, Ginger had explained, to um, find to see if there's any financial assistance for that drug. And what I'm going to be doing now, before we open up for questions, is just showing you briefly how to uh, go about doing that on our website. Okay, so we're on the home page right now. Uh, Ginger mentioned you could type the drug in here. That's one way of doing it. We can also go under the Patient Savings tab, and you're going to see a lot of information here, a lot of choices. To find the drug you want, we, we use this, uh, this uh, box over here. and You can search by um, brand name, generic name, program name, company name, and application, as well as through our $4 generic discount drug program. For now, we're going to use a brand name drug. Okay, so we're going to click brand name drugs. And you're going to see little icons right here, which will just show you what type of information you'll see once you open up that uh, type of drug. So we're going to go down to Abilify Tablet. You'll see that there's a Consumer Reports icon as well as a little pill icon. We're going to open the Consumer Reports icon first and what that will do is actually take the information from the Best Drugs for Less program and show you uh, what uh, Consumer Reports has to say uh, in regard to that drug classification. Okay, we're going to go back now. Back to Abilify Tablet and then we're going to try clicking on the pill icon. And what this will do is show you what patient assistance uh, programs are available for that drug. For uh, Abilify tablet, there's just one. 
and it will just give you information about the program, eligibility requirements, what to do with the application, when, you're, when you should be receiving your medication, and also uh, you, you can print it out. Um, as I said, there's, there might be multiple uh, applications for one type of uh, medicine. Okay, so that's how you use uh, the, the Needy Meds website to find uh, a drug that you're looking for uh, if you want to see if there's any assistance programs for them. And with that, I will open up uh, for questions. And uh, it looks right now like there's only one question, so I will address that to Ginger. Uh, the question is split pills. How does this save money? Um, split pills, how does that save uh, someone money? Well, the, the way that it works is, is that you're, you're getting fewer medications. The thing is you need to work with your doctor to see if, if this is something that can be done. A lot of people may not need that full one dose, so it can be split in half so that you're cutting your costs in half. So if you have 30 pills that you're prescribed in a month, it may end up being 60 pills because you're cutting each one in half. But this is something that I can't fully answer because you it, it's different for everyone based on their medication. So the best thing to do is to say to your doctor the next time you're in for a checkup or the next time he or she is prescribing a medication is do I need this full dose? Can I split this pill in half? I'm, I really care about cost, and I would really like to know if, if I split these, um, will I get the, the adequate dose, and can it save me money? Okay, great. Um, it doesn't look like there's any more questions at this moment. Um, That's so great. I, I'd like to thank Ginger and the audience for uh, joining us today, and, and take care. Thank you.